you put you put so much time into into we we haven't really talked about this much, but so much time into the developing the flavor of a certain roast, like you know you you get a you get a, a seed bean whatever mm-hmm. from somewhere. You have an idea of what because just based on previous times that you've used this bean. You have an idea of where the flavor is going to end up. You get it to that point to where you want it. How do you ensure that flavor translates to the kind of strangers who are brewing it? Well, it, okay. Like, like, what if they're brewing your coffee wrong and they're screwing the flavor up? Well, that's another thing. You know, we do the home brewing workshops for, you know, to kind of, there are fundamentals and best practices on brewing coffee. There are different you know, methods, you know, your French press requires a different water temperature than a pour over mm. or electric auto drip versus a, um, um, versus espresso. So they're different um, from ground particle size to water temperature to extraction time. There's a lot of things that go into, you know, to getting that optimal cup. As I, far as I realized, sorry, as I was, mm-hmm. as you were explaining that and as I was asking the question, I realized that might not be something people realize. Like people who aren't like super heavy into coffee like you are, like the flavor comes from the roasting and all of that. Sure, yes, but it also comes from adding hot water to the grounds and does does it matter like how fine you grind you grind it and everything like that. That also contributes, right? Absolutely. Um, it, it, one of the there's as a as a general you know think think about wine. Like you get two these these hundreds of dollars of bottles of wine, whatever the all the hard work for wine has been done before you ever get it. Mm. So as long as you store it at the right temperature, angle, whatever, and then you let it breathe, however long that particular wine is supposed to breathe and store it at the right temperature, you're good. Mm-hmm. Um, you can have $2,000 a pound Panamanian Geisha coffee and perfectly processed, roasted, stored. I know. Oh, we'll come Hold back on. to that. We'll come back. <laughs> Hold <laughs> on. Whoa. <laughs> That number just hit me. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll come back. We'll to come that. back. To that. We'll come back. To Circle that. back to two thousand dollars a pound. Uh, yes. Uh, green. Um, so yeah. So we'll. But what you can do is you can have this most expensive coffee, right? You can have it stored uh, properly, processed properly, roasted. You know, and you're about to enjoy it. You know, right at peak flavors, about three to four days after roasting. But if you don't get the grind particle size, the grind uniformity right for your brew method, and then if you use the wrong temperature water to brew that coffee, you're not going to end up with anywhere close to what that coffee could have been. You just wasted $400 <laughs> sure. a cup of coffee. Sure. sure. Damn. So, th- but but that's w- that doesn't mean, and I tell people, you know, w- w- share this information because it, it's not... It's not that you can't enjoy a cup of coffee that hasn't, you know, every single step along the way you had these absolute, you know, best price. It doesn't mean that you still can't enjoy it. It just means you're not going to get that optimum cup, what it could have been. Right. And um, so, so yeah, it's it's something that, that you know, for the, most of the people, either they either like French press and love French press. They either want... Um, a pour over like a Chemex or a, a, a Kalita Wave or Hario V60 or Alita, or they want, you know, just an auto drip. You know, fortunately, there's machines on the auto drip that brew at the certified SCA Specialty Coffee Association Gold Cup standard of 196 to 205 degrees, um, which is what the water should be on a flow through pour over, whether it's manual or uh, electric brew. That's what your water temp should be. Mm-hmm. Which ninety five percent of the brewers on the market do not hit that temperature for a long enough period of time. To so like a Mister Coffee is not probably not doing it. It's, probably it, it is it <laughs> it is it is not. Now I, we do coach people rather than me selling them a three hundred fifty dollar Technoform Mocha Master, which I can do, which has a five year warranty all hidden built in the Netherlands. Oh well, a five year warranty in that yeah, case. Yeah, that's a, that's a different. It is a different story. But yeah, yeah. usually before I sell them that, and this is where I'm like the world's worst salesman is we try and figure, okay, how do we get your current equipment to make the best cup it can right. before you start going down this road? Uh-huh. Um, and so there are tricks you can do. You can grind the coffee a little finer. And so when you grind finer, you open up more surface area to get the better extraction, a full extraction. I you, see. You reach a point of diminishing returns because you can either – bog up your uh, back up your brew basket because the water can't flow through because you've got the grinds too fine mm-hmm. um, or you've kind of 
gone not quite that far, but far enough to where you're getting an over extraction. So things, if your coffee's bitter, you know, it's either been over roasted um, or um, and or because it could be a multitude of things, um, or the water is interacting too long with those coffee grounds, and so it's extracting too much because you sort of have the sweet spot of your extraction. You want to extract all the things out of the coffee grounds that you want to get that are contributed in a, a, a positive manner, but if you end up getting some bitterness, um, almost like a green pepper, vegetative-type flavor, those mm -hmm. tend to be notes of over-extraction, meaning your water could have been too hot, the grounds could have been too fine, the extraction took too long. Um, it, you know, it, there's, there's a lot of things that can happen, so we kind of try and help people kind of troubleshoot that if they're, depending on how they're brewing it at home or in the restaurant or, or wherever they are, because we've, we've been, you know, fortunate we work um, – with some of the, the better restaurants in town so far from, you know, Ford and Shep, Soco, and um, actually recently picked up the scullery um, mm. a couple of months ago with, you know, coffees that complement their menu or that, that um, or achieve whatever flavor profile they're looking for. So it's not necessarily someone just coming to you and going, hey, I want to buy coffee from you. And you're like, sure, what bag do you want? You're like, Let, let's figure out what, what is going to be best for you. Hey there, hope you enjoyed that clip. You can find more clips like this and full video episodes of the Small Stuff Podcast on our YouTube channel. You can also listen to full episodes of the Small Stuff Podcast in audio form wherever it is you get your podcasts. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Amazon Music, Audible, all the places. Also, follow us on social media. We're on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. All the links are in the description. Have a nice day.